Hey Sana, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm doing my April wrap up. Uh, so on the upside this month I haven't DNF'd any books. Yes. Last month was terrible and I wanted to DNF probably about three books and I did DNF one and that is my personal hate. Like I hate not finishing a book. Really, I'm like I've paid money for this, I'm going to finish it. But some books are irredeemable, sadly. Alright, so I'll start with the lowest amount of stars first, and I'll work up. So my lowest rating book was The Last Nemsara by Kristen Ciccarelli, and I gave like 2 out of 5 stars. Uh, basically, the main character, Usha, is a dragon slayer, and she is offered her freedom by her father so she doesn't have to marry the commander of the army who is an evil crazy man uh, if she brings back the head of the first dragon Kozu who is also the most powerful and he also burnt down the city and burnt Asha when she was a child so, yeah, it was a fantastic book for about the first 60%, and then it descended into whiny teenage angst and annoying romance. That, uh, if you want to uh, know more of my thoughts, I'll put a card up the top so you can look at my full review. Um, my next lowest scoring book was The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Ross. So The Queen's Rising follows the story of Brianna, who is half Valenian and half Maven. She is raised in an orphanage and then whisked away to a place called Magnolia House by her grandfather when she's about 11, where she is to learn one of the passions which includes like painting, wit, um, music etc. And she can't pick one and she eventually ends up deciding to passion in knowledge but when the solstice comes she doesn't get a patron and so she stays on at Magnolia House. Eventually a disgraced lord offers her patronage and she goes to live with him and they plan an uprising against the tyrant king of Mevana and they plan to install the rightful queen. So lots of adventure etc. The premise was fine. The plot was very predictable. Um, you could tell what was going to happen before it happened. The, like They made a plan, everything just ran smoothly. All in all, uh, I was just a bit underwhelmed, I guess. It's not to say it's a bad book. It's pretty decent. It just didn't wow me. And I'll put a card up the top if you want to see my full review. The next book uh, that I read in April, in terms of star ratings, was Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. Uh, it's a fantastic book. Um, so basically, Lady Constellation is the anonymous creator of a hugely popular webcomic. Online she's got millions of fans and followers and she has friends. In real life she's Eliza Merck who is weird, silent and friendless. That's until Wallace Warland moves to her school. And Wallace himself has his own monsters that he's dealing with. And the two end up being friends. Wallace himself is actually a really big fan of Monstrous Sea and he writes fanfiction that is also really really popular. 
So anyway, the two of them develop a relationship and it all kind of goes to hell when her secret identity is revealed. She spirals out of control. I really enjoyed this book for the most part. It did sort of devolve a little bit at the end um, after her identity was revealed and I have a bit of a rant in my review which I'll link to up here somewhere. Um, but on the whole it was a great book. I thought it really accurately uh, depicted having anxiety and how you cope with that. It also looked at creativity and how that can be an escape and a form of expression. It was a great book so I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. Next up was The Queen of the Tealing by Erica Johansson. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars although I wasn't quite as emotionally invested in it as I have been in some other books but the plot was really solid. I couldn't poke holes in it. The characters were really well developed. We had a few different points of view um, which was great. So basically it's about Kelsey who is the heir apparent to the kingdom of the Teeling. On her 19th birthday the Queen's Guards show up to lead her to the capital hopefully intact so she can be crowned. After that she has to deal with the legacy that her mother and her uncle the regent have left behind which is a kingdom in ruins basically. It's got no infrastructure, no education, no medicine. It yeah, It's a disaster and on top of that the queen of the neighbouring kingdom who seems to be immortal or at least very very old uh, is not very happy about this turn of events so war is on the horizon all right so up to my last two books they're in no particular order because they both got five out of five stars the first one is to kill a kingdom by alexandra christo to Kill a Kingdom is a Little Mermaid retelling, but darker. It follows Lyra, a siren princess, who every year kills and takes the heart of a prince. Our other main character is Elian, who is Crown Prince of Midas and also a kind of siren killing pirate. And they're both determined to kill each other. Basic story is that Lyra kills one of her mother's subjects and in order to pay for her crime she is turned into a human and tasked with bringing the heart of Elian, the siren killer, to her mother. Elian himself wishes to rid the world of sirens so he is on a quest to find a magical stone that can kill the Siren Queen. On the way he finds Lyra in human form flailing about in the water and uh, yeah brings her on board and off they go on an adventure. What I loved about this the plot was awesome lots of adventure it's just action non-stop but it's not at the expense of character development. What I loved about the characters was that they struggled with what was good and what was evil and who they wanted to be. There was also lots of witty sarcastic dialogue which is always a plus for me. So yeah, 5 out of 5 stars for To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Christo. And finally a book I finished a few days ago and I looked up the pronunciation of this is Kirki by Madeline Miller. It's a Greek mythology retelling I guess um, based around the character Kirki 
who was the first witch which is awesome I will be doing a full review and hopefully again I can link up here if not I'll put a link down here to that full review so basically Kyrki is the daughter of Helios the personification of the Sun Kyrki is not like the other gods and nymphs and whatnot and so she is shunned and ridiculed eventually she seeks the company of a mortal and she falls in love with him and as a result she casts a dark spell and discovers that she has powers that scare the hell out of the gods basically as a result Zeus punishes her by exiling her to the island of Aiaia, which is deserted. But it doesn't remain deserted for long, and gods, demigods, mortals all wind up on her shores. So, yes, fantastic book. The writing is wonderful. Kiriki herself is so human even though she's like got this titan pedigree she actually feels the whole spectrum of human emotions which is what makes her so interesting to read about I highly highly recommend this book it's uh, I think it's adult fantasy slash historical fiction slash mythology retelling so if you're interested in that give it a go it's amazing so that's my april wrap up uh thanks for watching subscribe below hit the bell if you want notifications and i hope to see you again bye